dear students, uh, let's begin our second part of today's class. Uh, today we are going uh, we are going to talk about push factors of migration. So number one uh, most important push factor is lack of economic opportunities and job searching. In some countries there are more people than job opportunities, so they migrate to other country to find a better job because better job can provide a better life for example india's population overwhelming and outweighs the job availability especially for skilled workers because of this their citizens choose to leave their own country and seek seek jobs elsewhere difficulty of finding a job these migrants usually seek lower wages, although they are highly skilled. Then another reason is uh, political unrest or uh, war, war, social conflict, social chaos, okay, political unrest. So these migrants are commonly known as uh, uh, asylum uh, seeker. So they will be called as refugees after the refugees status from the country of residents, for example, refugees from Syria who has uh, fled their own country due to the Syrian civil war. So all countries except Syrian refugees and Turkey is the largest host by providing residence for more than 3.5 million people. Then another reason is environmental issues increase in migration over the years due to climate change or environmental disasters they are known as environmental migrants or environmental refugees so this migration mainly caused by floods and storms okay china has the largest number of migrants due to natural disasters as of 2018 there have been 3.8 million migrations caused by extreme weather. So the, ma the most drastic event was the Typhoon Manput. Uh, let me uh, talk about some pull factors. Number one is uh, labor demand. Okay, Developing and developed country are suffering from a from an insufficient insufficiency of low skill labors because it's unattractive to locals due to low paying and does not provide uh, career advancement. For example, Malaysia, which is highly dependent on foreign labor workers, especially in the construction industry. Then storage of labor supply in Malaysia in this industry has resulted in foreign workers to migrate to P my, uh, Malaysia to help fulfill the demand country uh, currently 1.76 million documented foreign labor in Malaysia so for every one documented foreign workers there are 2.5 million workers that are undocumented then another uh, reason is religious freedom each country has different religious views that seem to be the main focus some countries have more tolerant views, making it more attractive. For instance, Muslim would be more keen to stay in Muslim friendly countries like Saudi Arabia. So this is because it would be easier for them in terms of looking for food to eat and places to pray. For Jewish, the top country to migrate for them would be Israel. For Hindus, India would be their main destination. Then economic effect uh, uh, my, on migration in the short term, sending countries will suffer from losses and minimal gain. Long term, they will experience more gains. Okay, so these effects are sometimes dependent on the skill level of the workers and whether the country is on the receiving end or sending end. Okay. So there is a positive effect and also negative effect. So positive effect, remittance plays a huge role in the growth of GDP, okay, the growth domestic product of the country. So remittance is money being earned by the 
migrant abroad and being sent back to the to their home country so in 2017 remittance worldwide totaled usd 633 billion an increase of 7.4 percent from 2016 china and india were the top two countries that received remittance in 2017 and 2018 then uh, negative effect the loss of skilled workers or talented talent known as brain drain so this is a loss especially if a migrant is from a developing country so skill or talented professionals could bring development and advancement in developing countries so this seems to be an issue in russia so top professionals who could have contributed to the economy or possibly the science of field have uh, chosen to migrate to different countries the negative effect for receiving country the migrants will be sending the remittance to the home country so this will cause the depreciation of exchange rate because there is a large outflow of money then this is due to the migrants selling the receiving country currency in order to buy their home country currency so when the supply of the receiving country currency is increasing on foreign exchange market the value the value of uh, the receiving country currency will fall and this will impact the economy negatively then the receiving end of the spectrum usually gets beneficial effects from migrants as a developed country a large supply of laborers can lead to inexpensive voyages they could also utilize the talent of the migrants if the migrant is a professional for example about 40 percent of india's immigrants into the us already been accepted as a worker and this shows the demand for indian skilled labor from american corporations okay then migration and economic crisis okay the economic crisis has led to economic downturn and result in economic recession during economic crisis the most vulnerable and affected by the by this crisis are in workers if the crisis is continuously occurred it will result in changes in the velocity and direction of international migration flows then the short-term effect of economic crisis on uh, uh, migration are reduce migration flows due to fewer job opportunities in foreign country an increase in the propensity of migrant workers to return to their home country then measures taken by government to return unemployed migrants back to their home country then large declines in regular migration then long uh, long term